still waiting for my new uh, new lure rods to arrive, but it does mean I get to play with my uh, ten-year-old major craft crossage concept rod, which is uh, specifically designed for soft plastics. It's really and five to twenty-three grams. It's eight foot. And it has a flex like a fly rod, <laughs> which means that it's great fun fighting big fish. Get my radio out. A lot of people say I should wear a life vest, but do those people carry a radio? Because you're going to have to get pulled out of the water at some point. So, yes, a life vest is a, or PFD is a great idea. Um, but also, so is a radio. Mobile phones are useless in the wet. So, soft plastic's going to be the name of the day, name, game of the day, name of the day, whatever it is, and I wanted a dark colour because the water is so murky. got these um, from Lure Boy on Instagram, and uh, these look great for the, this type of condition. I've never used these before, I've had them a while, but I've been bait fishing, so the reason why I decided to use them today instead of maybe something that I know is gonna that catch as well is my these have got all these little um, ribs along the side which is just gonna create more more vibration in the water whereas my normal shards I'm gonna go black and gold and um, my normal phones oh, maybe blue Black and gold first of all, because it's going to create a bigger silhouette or better silhouette against the uh, the murky water and uh, my normal shards don't have any of these so I'm hoping these are going to do just as well I mean look, the business, they've got a, a hook slit across there one in the belly as well, so we can use them with weedless hooks uh, nice funky little eyes which either make a difference or don't some people say it gives a fish a strike point but the shards that I usually use don't have eyes and I don't seem to do too bad, but could always do better, I guess. Um, I'm going to fish these on a 1.0, I think, with a 18 gram cheb, just because of the wind. So that's my normal uh, slider go shard. Oh, I've just dropped that clip. And uh, you can see they're, they're very similar, apart from this one's a bit deeper in the body. Yep, let's get it rigged up. So I'm going to rig this weedless, so I've just pin, put the nose through, so go somewhere over the bend of the hook and then measure out where you want the tip to go so, or the point, so right there and bring it out through the back, nice and straight there we go Chabaruska or a bottom weight slide that onto the hook if you're using hooks, you need to have a horizontal, well you're obviously going to use hooks, but you need to have a horizontal eye on your hook. I'll see a bait will twist when it, uh, when you stick it on the cheb. Like that. And I get to use a Christmas present. I have a half Lu Lucy Limpets, Lucy. I uh, got me a pair of Gerber fishing pliers. I'm uh, well psyched to use these, like, I've always wanted a decent pair, I always keep losing mine and buying cheap ones and they just break. So, uh, yeah, well, I'll get in good cutting surface there, which cuts braid easily. I tried them in the house because I was that excited. And a lock there, nice and ergonomic. Everything's replaceable, so, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Lucy. Right then, let's go. First cast. Oh, uh, it pings them out. Sorry about the wind noise. I'm standing facing right into the wind here.
Whoa. First cast. Feels like a coolie. Even though it's a small pollock. Oh, it's got us in the structure. Yep. Well, there we go. First cast. And the lure boy lure. All right size coley. Always drop these things. There we go. Woo! Let's get them back in. I thought I'd start off with a, quite a quick retrieve or just a straight retrieve and let the lure hit the bottom and then, uh, yeah, just kept winding and um, just to see if there's any active fish. And yeah, Coley took it straight away. Woo, blanks off. Something had a little go there as well, probably another coolie. Oh, it's chilly. Oh, in the kelp there. That'll go up and over. It's like there's a big bit of structure in front of us. So there's a rock there. There's a rock here. There's obviously this stuff in front of us and I'm casting out to that rock over there. And I think there's a horizontal piece of structure with kelp across the top. There's a f have to pull up and over it. <laughs> I think the coolies are having a go. Ah, I've dropped it. Hey. <laughs> Don't half scrap these things. It's cracking fun when there's nothing else around. Oh. Got us in the snag. Oh no, come on, out you get. Give a little bit of slack and see. Feel it pulling. I can see my leader now, he's not that deep. Yeah, that'll, that'll go. Oh, 
funny how fish can do that. Transfer your hook into the kelp and then just unhook themselves. So I've had no more coli bites for a while, so I'm kind of changing my direction and fishing around all the different little bits of structure here. Kind of a bit miffed about, or miffed, or it's been irritating as it's just started raining. Uh, the forecast was for 0% chance of rain today. Come on, surely it's 2022. Surely they can tell you if it's going to be raining in Scotland or not. Bit of a risky cast that, given the structure that's in front. I'm planning that the current's moving north. And that I'm hoping, and the wind, and I'm hoping that that means that my line's going to be in between this piece of structure that's under the water and then this big one. So I can feel my braid moving over the, uh, moving over the structure. Pulled through some kelp there. Let's lift the lure a bit higher. There we go, we're over. I didn't feel any kelp, so I'm letting my lure sink down, and that means hopefully following the line of that structure and that's maybe where the fish might be hanging out nope but i got my lure back so i can do that again uh, it's half one now so it's slack water um pollock and the coolies have disappeared the pollock obviously weren't here but they tend to like feeding in uh, in a stronger current codlin on the other hand in my experience from the past they normally I know they like current, but when I've been fishing deep water marks like this, they like, um, I've caught more in slack tide than I have kind of during the tide. So, um, yeah, fingers crossed, because the coolies have disappeared and I've had that one fish on the shore. So, so far it's looking like the cast, curse of the first cast fish and the weather. Oh, that was a subtle bite. Trying to get it up over the uh, up over the weed I got transferred into earlier. There we go, second fish of the day. That coley um, hit it on the drop. That's why it was such a subtle bite. Lure boy, lure is doing its job. Not massive, but enough to keep us entertained on a cold, wet day. And away it goes. So that means we've beaten the uh, the curse. I was starting to think that maybe, maybe because the coolies had disappeared, the bigger predators might have moved in. But I was probably just uh, being a bit too optimistic with that. But second fish on the shore, get in. Oh, there they are again. Oh. <laughs> Go on, you can do it again, son. Go on, take it.
Well, we're just tapping away there. I think because I've got a one o hook on. They're kind of just nipping at the tail. But that one really smashed it after a couple of... Uh, whoop. Whoa. Yeah, getting bigger. Right, that one really smashed it after a little pause and then a quick start up. Start of a retrieve. The tent, I like a moving bait, two coolies. Hook straight out. There we go, nice lovely colours on them, great looking fish. They don't half stink though. Something's had a go at this one. I know people down on the south coast, a lot of my followers or subs don't actually get coolies. And the, in reality they're kind of like your whiting, I would have said, you know, they can be a real pest when you don't want to catch them, but on a day like this, when it doesn't seem to be anything else about, they're great fun. I mean, they're bait stealers when you're fishing with bait tackle, but um, at least they'll take a lure more um, more freely than a white and will. And uh, also, they, they scrap really well for their size. Great on the LRF tackle, and that's why that soft rod. It's not not an LRF rod, but it's soft, and it you know you get a bend in the rod, so it doesn't just feel like you're winding your lure in. But uh, let's get this back anyway, enough talking. Oh. And away it goes. So these fish that I'm catching are just in between these two big rocks here. Oh. Which uh, you can cast too as long as you don't get a tip rough. Try that again. A bit too far to the right that time. Come off. I was just thinking they'd moved away there. But uh, obviously they haven't. On the plus side though, which, well, no, that's not a bad thing, but I didn't hook up, that's a bad thing. On the plus side though, the sun's coming out.
Hard five. Yep, there we go. It's another one. Actually, it's probably smaller than the previous one. Sorry about that. Well, that's it. Gonna uh, pack up on here and uh, see what the um, the way off's like. You'll not be able to see it on any of these cameras and it's too wet for the drone, but uh, there's a massive pod of dolphins stretched right across the, uh, the horizon here. One's just come out there, one's just there, all over. Beautiful to see. But we can't get distracted, we need to get off, so uh, yeah, catch you on the other side. Got distracted by those dolphins, they're breaching out there, it's amazing. But uh, let's pack up. If you want a chance of uh, getting one of these rucksacks for free, then uh, go and check out. My uh, previous video of this one, I'll just leave a card up in the top top corner of the screen now. But uh, brilliant dry sacks, loads of attachment points and I've modified it as well to carry rods and um, whatever else, tripods and my, uh, for me. But if you uh, go and watch that other video, if you haven't already, and then uh, you'll get see the instructions on how to to win one of these in a couple of weeks. I think I think they cost about 180 quid. I haven't paid that, but uh, they're not cheap. Believe me. Bye bye little rock. Oh, it's this stuff. These rocks here that are going to be slippery. <clears throat> I'm going to have to take my time. Be extra careful. As soon as I leave the barnacle line, it's going to be... That's my little last island of safety here, the end of the barnacles. I think what I'll do is I'll... This green stuff is, uh, is de so slippery, so I'm just going to traverse along this little groove here. It's a real shame to be leaving now because the wind's died down nicely. And it's looking pretty fishy, but given it four hours. Probably time to do one. Don't slip. Thank you. Do you know, I don't think I've ever gone up and down this place the same way in the, well, I think it's my third time here. The grip is fine, it's great with these shoes, but the terrain's so, so loose like that. Do the old zigzaggy thing. So it's taught in my mountain leaders course. Training, don't go straight up if you can help it. Zigzag, 
you cover more ground but it's not as steep you can get more of your foot on the slope rather than just your forefoot it does work the old guy who was uh, my kind of mentor he was an absolute legend of the uh, the mountains so uh totally believe him well there we go back out probably a good thing really it's going to be dark in a half an hour but uh it's been a quite a productive day aside from maybe you know hooking well i hooked into five landed three or four and uh definitely dropped two all coolies, no biggies, but uh, still, it's good fun, great to be out. A little chilly and damp at times, but that's lure fishing in the winter, I guess. If, uh, if you want to take part in the giveaway I'm doing to celebrate you guys, uh, or 15,000 of you guys joining my channel, then watch a previous video we'll do a live draw to win some one of these bags the shoes that i'm wearing and some other bits and bobs as well but in the meantime thank you very much for watching thanks to everyone and all of the old school guys who've uh, been with the channel for a long time and until the next one tight lines